Hello everybody and welcome to episode 16. I just want to take a moment, I know I've done this before, but I just want to congratulate everyone who has managed to get this far. If you look at the view numbers for these episodes now, you can see they're getting way, way, way less views as we get further and deeper into the series. That's normal. Um, for if, if you're looking at that and thinking, oh god, John's channel is dying. No, it's just very normal. Um, as we get this deep into a series, obviously people aren't going to watch episode 15 or whatever if they haven't you know, already gotten through episode seven, eight, nine, whatever, and people drop off. People drop off after episode. Biggest drop off is after one, and then after two, and and so on. But we still have that drop off even now. Um, less people drop off with each episode as we get to this point. The thousand or so people, you know, that, that are sticking through, you tend to stick. Um, most of those people stick towards the end, but it still decays in every episode. So if you've gotten this far, you are part of an ever more exclusive club right, of people who managed to get all the way from episode one all the way to this episode you're doing really really well and i just want to take a moment to emphasize that um because it takes discipline to, to get here you can be you can think oh yeah i'm gonna learn how to make an arpg i'm gonna follow this huge series um and you follow the first few episodes and, and then you know the work sets in you know watching these videos having to listen to my voice for 30 minutes at a time work out what the hell I'm telling you to do, debug wherever you make a mistake, and so on for this many episodes, that takes work. So if you've made it this far, I just want to say I'm, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> very well done. I hope you continue to stick around, uh, make it to the end, even if you don't know, even if you know, after a few more episodes you, you move on to something else, I hope you, you just by making it far, you'll probably learn a ton of stuff, and um, you should be really proud of yourself for having done so. Anyway, with that out of the way, it is episode 16. Today we are going to look at doing entity collisions. Um, so at the moment in our game we can walk into walls and that's great. Um, but we can just walk straight through our signpost and that's less great. Um, we have this tile-based collision system, but sometimes maybe it's not enough. Um, I would like, generally speaking, if I, if I make a tile-based collision system, I want to use it for basically everything. And I want to avoid doing an entity collision system if I can. So uh, if if I'd have not been naughty and I'd actually aligned the signpost to the grid, I could have demonstrated by just well, I guess but I could move that move that into here. I I I would do things like this, right? Um, where I just use this for static things that do that, and I would just generally really uh, avoid or have a very specific type of object that I would use for doing um, collisions with entities. You know, I'd have like a collidable entity object that was like separate from my other entities um, just to really limit the amount of collision checks I'm doing just to maximize the effectiveness and the point of having done this uh, tile-based collision system. But I will say that the main reason we did the tile-based collision system was to teach you how to do it. I think it's a very useful lesson, very uh, important skill to be able to have. Um, but we are today going to write in a collision system for our entities so that we can just tick that entity collision box uh, in P entity in a variable definition in here and have them be solid so that we can you know, walk into them just as the same as we have the walls and we, it stops us being able to walk through our signposts or our rocks or whatever else we want to place in the world, um, which makes things a lot easier for us in terms of dynamic collisions, things that can be moved around or change and so on, okay? So I'm going to come into um, player collision here, and you can see we have horizontal tiles, uh, horizontal move commit, vertical tiles, and vertical move commit, and just nestled in between these two sections, we're going to check for entities that we collide with. So I'm just going to get straight into it. So right at the top here, um, we want to add one line of code um, to set something up. We want to write var underscore um, entity list. Uh, equals ds list create. Okay, we're going to create a list and it's going to store everything um, that we find that we could that could possibly be a collision. Okay, when we walk into a space, we check that space for entities and we put those entities into this list and then we process them appropriately. Okay, um, in between the two axes here, between horizontal tiles and vertical tiles. I'm going to clear that list because I'm going to write ds list clear. Um, uh, what did we call it? Uh, entity list. Okay, uh, we'll do it here. Um, clear list between axes. 
And then at the bottom here, after we've done everything, but before we return collision, um, DS list destroy. We want to get rid of it. Entity list. Even though this is a temporary variable, the variable itself does not contain the list. Okay. Um, so yes, this variable will go away, but the list will remain in memory if we don't explicitly destroy it. All right. All that's contained in this variable is the ID or the sort of a pointer that tells GameMaker where this list lives in its memory. All right. Doesn't contain the list itself. Always important to remember that. So you have to destroy the list. Uh, when we no longer need it. Okay, so we've made a list uh, we cleared it between the axes and then we destroy it and then we're we're set up um, To start doing our checks for entities. So in hor the horizontal section here between horizontal tiles and horizontal move commit I'm gonna make a bit of space and write horizontal Entities, let's give ourselves some space. We've got a lot of I'm getting a bit claustrophobic here. Let's just Give ourselves a bit of space, maybe make this a little bit bigger so we can focus neatly on the code, right? So horizontal entities. Um, first thing I'm going to do is get a count of all the entities that are in the spot that we're trying to move to. And we're going to use the lovely new instance position list function to do that. So I'm going to write var underscore entity count equals instance position list. Um, I love these functions, these collision list functions, they've done so much to make doing stuff like this easier and solve a lot of problems. It's been great. Um, the reason we're using these and we're finding everything that could be at our position is maybe we have a couple of entities overlapping one another, one has collision, one doesn't. Uh, if we found, if we just did instance position, we found the entity that didn't have collision and we checked to see, you know, say, can we go here? And it's like, yes, you can. And we go there. Um, but there is another entity on that spot that does have collision. You can see the problem, right? So we need to get everything. So instance position list x plus h speed. Okay, that's the position we're moving to horizontally. Um, uh, y is just our y. The and you can see at the bottom here is where I'm getting these um, different arguments from, as always. Um, the object type that we're looking for is p entity. Um, the list that we want to store all the IDs in that we collide with is that one we established at the top, entity list, underscore entity list, and then ordered, um, as you remember me talking about these functions before, uh, we'll order it um, from closest to furthest uh, based on like the X, Y position of each entity. We don't need that, um, so I'm going to write false in here, which will help speed up that function by not having to order them appropriately. Hey, and then I'm going to write um, var underscore snap x. Okay, uh, and that's going to be it's going to store the position that we want to actually snap to if there is a collision. We want to you know, we want to move as close as we can to the the boundary of whatever instance we might collide with. Okay, so if entity count is not zero, then we know that there is an entity in the space that we are trying to move to horizontally. So while uh, entity count is greater than zero, um, and what we're going to do is just remove a uh, lower entity count as we process each one, and then when it hits zero, we know, you know we know we've processed everything that we might collide with. Okay. Um, so while that number is greater than zero, uh, var entity check is going to equal entity list, open bracket, vertical pipe, zero, close square bracket, semicolon. Um, so we're going to get the first entry uh, in that DS list. You could also use DS list uh, get, um, DS list, uh, is it find? I always struggle with these because I don't use them very often. Uh, DS list find value and put entity uh, list uh, position zero. That line of code is exactly the same as this. Okay, exactly the same. It's just a, a way to reference um, entities in a DS list. Entries, sorry, in a DS list. Um, so we're going to get the instance ID. Um, of something that we're going to collide with that's the, the first entry in this list. All right. Um, once we've got that, if entity check dot entity collision 
equals true. We know this is a p entity, all right, because we're, we're only looking for instances of p entity, um, which includes all of its children, so the signposts, uh, the grass, and, and so on. Um, so anything in any IDs in this list will be an instance of p entity. So we can, once we've got one of them, we can check uh, its entity collision because we know all instances of p entity have this variable. All right. And if it's set to true, then we know that this is something we want to collide with. I don't know why I put a semicolon there. We don't want one. That's not the end of this line. <laughs> okay. Open uh, some squiggly brackets. And the first thing we want to do if there is a collision, uh, if there is an entity we want to collide with, is move as close as we can to it. Move as close as we can. You'll notice as we're doing this, the other problem we can have is if we collide with multiple uh, entities in one spot, um, it's going to process them in a mostly random order and just move us to the boundary of one of them instead of the one that's closest to us. I've just accepted that solving that um, adds complexity I can't be bothered with, and um, instead, I will simply design around it by not having, by accepting as a design constraint that I can't have multiple collidable entities overlapping one another or it might cause problems. Okay, perfectly fine to do that. All right, perfectly fine if you, if the complexity of adding an edge case of some kind or solving a case in your game is high. Or, uh, or you don't know how to do it, or it's just too much. In this case, it was just too much for a tutorial. Um, but but for, for any uh, reason that you don't want to do it, and it's valid for you to just accept the design constraint and design around it, okay? Do that more often. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing to do. Um, don't be afraid to just accept, I can't have, I can't handle this edge case, so my level design and so on will account for that. Don't try and code around every edge case. You will drive yourself mad. All right, <laughs> so move as close as we can. If sign h speed uh, equals minus one, should be familiar with this kind of thing. It's just going to tell us whether we're moving left or right. Uh, if h speed is negative, we're moving left. If it's positive, we're moving right. So if h speed is negative, that's what we've done there. Um, so we're moving left. Um, if that's true, underscore snap x is going to equal entity check uh, there, uh, dot bbox right plus one. So we're going to get the right hand side of the bounding box of whatever entity it is um, and add one to it, um, which will give us one pixel to the right of the entity. Okay. That's the handy thing about having an, an exact instance ID that we're colliding with. You'll remember from the platformer series, we just collide, we just said, is there an O wall here? We don't really care about its ID. And so we had to like move one pixel at a time until we were like flush with it. Because we know the instance ID here, and this is something you could have done in the platformer as well, just the same if you used instance uh, position or, or you know, used something that got its ID. Um, but because we know its ID, we can get its exact bounding box position and just go straight there because we know we, we can skip over just checking every single pixel. Is there a collision here? You know, we just go straight to um, the edge of it, which is which is very he helpful. Uh, makes it quite similar to our sort of tile collision. It's good. So move as close as we can. Um, and if uh, sign h speed is not minus one, um, so we can write else under here. Uh, snap x equals entity check dot bbox left minus one. Okay, so we go to the left hand side of it, uh, minus one, because we were moving to the right. Uh, then x equals uh, snap x, right? So we, we work out where that ought to be, and then we just set x to equal it. Uh, h speed uh, can then equal zero. Uh, oh, sorry, that's green h speed. We want our h speed with the capital S. And collision equals true, and entity count equals zero. Um, the reason we do that is if, if we find a collision, we don't want to bother going through all the rest of them because we know we found one. We don't want to bother checking more entities on the spot. We're just, we're just going to skip over them because we've done a collision. So we just set entity count to zero, and that will get us out of this while loop. 
Otherwise, um, if you know entity collision wasn't true, and we, we should, there was just a plant on this spot as well as a fence or whatever entity it is we're colliding with, um, then we want to keep looping through this. So we're going to do ds list delete uh, entity list zero. That will remove the first entry, entry zero, uh, from entity list, which will reduce the size of entity list. Um, and then uh, because of that, we need to then lower entity count. So entity count minus minus just to subtract one from it, okay? Which will bring us closer and closer to zero. And we'll just, you know, check one entity at a time until we're out of entities to check. All right, and that's horizontal entity uh, collision. Bzz, wrong, no it isn't. If you spotted the, the edit cut there, well done. Um, huge mistake, <laughs> entity check here. Didn't put that underscore at the start. Okay, um, kind of important. <laughs> Make sure you go do that. Um, otherwise, it would uh, fail, and that would be embarrassing, and you would have to re-record footage for your tutorial video. That would suck, wouldn't it? Anyway, <laughs> put that underscore in there, um, and then we can actually test this. So I'm going to go to O signpost, go to Entity Collision, turn true. I know we haven't done vertical yet, but we can see the effects of this nonetheless. Um, and you'll notice now I can run into the side of our signpost. Pretty cool. Um, we can still run straight through it vertically. It'll snap us out because the, the horizontal collision will, will kick in and it'll snap us to the side of it. Um, but you can see the, the collision there is working. So now we just have to duplicate that code for vertical. So let's zoom out a bit so we can see a bit better because we've got a lot of code in here now. So I'm just going to grab, uh, okay, I'll zoom in a little. I'll grab this whole bit more. <laughs> this whole horizontal entity section. All right. That's why commenting is useful. I can just grab this whole section and uh, between vertical tiles and vert uh, I just pressed control C and copied that. Um, between vertical tiles and vertical move commit. Now just make some face and paste that in. Okay. And then rename it vertical entities. Now be careful here. Um, very, very easy when just copying and pasting a huge chunk like this and just swapping X's to Y's and so on to make a mistake. Um, very easy to write a, a V instead of a Y or something or just, you know, not move things correctly. So please pay attention here. Just go through this nice and slow. Make sure you do everything. Okay. So we name the comment vertical entities. Uh, var entity count equals instance position list. Uh, change X get rid of the plus h speed on x move it to the y and change h speed to v speed okay so x comma y plus v speed snap x becomes snap y okay uh, if sign h speed becomes if sign v speed snap x again becomes snap y enter to check b box right plus one um, becomes, uh, which one is this? We're heading up. Uh, so this becomes bbox bottom plus one. Okay, so we snap to the bottom of the thing. Uh, snap x again becomes snap y. bbox left here becomes bbox top. y, uh, x becomes y uh, equals snap x. Uh, snap x becomes snap y h speed equals zero, h speed becomes v speed, collision equals true, entity count equals zero, ts list delete, entity count minus minus, vertical move commit remains the same obviously. So there we have it, okay, so just make sure, just you know, go through that again if you need to, just slowly, bit by bit, make sure you change all of those things across, and then that's our vertical section done, okay. Just went through that nice and slow because it's very, very easy to just accidentally skip one of these, or just, you know, you write y speed and or something you know very easy to make that mistake um so just be careful and then that's our uh, that's our collision so now um our signposts have collision pretty cool um signpost was a bad example i think because it was you know the they're static and we can just literally stick a um a coal uh, tile over them but it will be handy for things like rocks uh, that we can like pick up and throw and that kind of thing um later on but that's how you do an entity collision system, and you—it's—it's it's valid for you to use that for your whole game and use um, wall objects in your rooms if you want. 
gets very messy in my opinion if you've got really big rooms um uh as opposed to just painting tiles and i find tiles honestly easier to manage as well i find it easier to just have this one layer i can toggle on or off and uh, draw these in and out rather than just having big o wall objects everywhere um that I'm, like stretching and resizing and that kind of thing but it's up to you you can do you you do you man do your collisions however you want now you know how to do both so do it do whatever combination of those things you would like and that's entity collision uh, thanks for watching guys. Hope you find this useful. Congrats again on making it this far. Hope you stick with the rest of the series too. And I'll catch you all on part 17. Thank you all very much for watching and thank you in particular to my Patreon supporters without whom I couldn't be doing any of this work right now and I wouldn't have this super privileged lifestyle whereby I have a job that I can do indoors um, during this crazy lockdown that we're all going through. Thank you to all these people you see on screen now who are helping this work still come out and still come to you, even during this bizarro time in the world right now. Huge shout out in particular, and in no particular order, of course, to the following cool kids. Bowser the Dog, Zinan May, Robert Churches, Roven Darlin, Zephyr Flame, Daka Dondago, Max M, Bur TT, Relentless Rex, Do What Doobie, Jason, James Siggins, Dark Rider 0318, James L. Anderson, Hare, Hyungjin, Rupinda, Rennie Dam, Scott Matthews, Leo, Tyler Hubble, Maria Celeste Oliveira Freyline, Cabbage Pants, Gilberto Cisneros, Figgy, Mark Burgess, John Harwood, Zach Collett, Goose, Caleb Franklin, Troy Mera, Alex Schenkel, Wilfredo Landera, Carter Green, Justin Adega, Julian Paul, and Keza Ho. Thank you all ever so much. Couldn't do this work without you. And I'll Thank you all ever so much. I could not do this work without you. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.